All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchett is compelling. It's not worth it. She needs to be worthy of you. Compassionate. I don't want you to give up on your dreams. I don't. And I want to figure out how we get this straight. She's powerful. Absolutely not. How dare you do that? And she's on the bench. Both of you all are dead wrong. We will stand adjourned. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Jesse Grisham is suing Chris Grisham in the amount of $7,200. Ms. Grisham claims her father promised to pay her rent when she moved to a new city and says he cut her off when she declared her love for a woman. You're suing your father for $7,200. That is correct. Why? Well, um, when I moved out to Los Angeles, to discover who I was as a person and further my career in marketing. Um, he expressed um, interest in helping support me um, reach my dreams and my goals, and he agreed to pay for a year's worth of rent um, at my apartment. Um, once moving to Los Angeles, I was able to further pursue um, political passions that I have in political activism for movements like reproductive rights and the LGBTQ rights. And um, I came out as a lesbian myself and met my girlfriend, Sierra. And I started posting on Instagram. So stop right there. So let me turn to you. This is your daughter. What was the agreement when she moved to Los Angeles? What did you agree to do for her? I wanted her to go out. I wanted her to grow. So I said, if you go out and you give your effort, and you find a passion and you chase the passion, I will help you. What I didn't expect was the usage of that passion to pull the rug out from under me. When you mean pull the rug out from under you, what does that mean? Her mother passed away at a young age and it was, it was a difficult thing for both of us to, to deal with. And, and due to that, she became pretty quiet and I, I jumped into my work. As I jumped into work, uh, we had grown apart, and I wanted her to know that I was still there, that I was still willing to support her. And I offered, if LA is where you've landed, then I will assist you in finding a safe place, finding a safe apartment, making sure the neighborhood is okay, and then I will help you pay the rent. And that's what I did. All right, and so, where were you living before you moved to Los Angeles? Texas. Uh, we lived in a small town in rural Texas. It was a very conservative, religion-based area where it would have been very, very difficult to be gay, um, which is something that I saw with my uncle, who is an outwardly gay man in that area. So I made the decision to leave. And why has this caused a rift with you and your father, and why are you in my courtroom today? We're here because I made a post on my Instagram um, that brought to light the actions and philosophies and morals of a political candidate from my hometown um, who happened to be my father's best friend and how he was blatantly and openly anti-LGBTQ, anti-woman's rights. He was extremely racist and xenophobic. He wasn't racist. He's, he's a good man, and you know Walt, and you've known him your whole life, and he's not racist, and you know it. I know that Walt's politics contradict the way that Walt lives his life. Um, for instance, in the Instagram post that I made, I explained how he had a mistress um, while in office, and ended up getting her pregnant, and which he paid her off to get an abortion, which is so entirely hypocritical for the way he lives his life. And knowing that this man was going to have power over legislation in my hometown just didn't sit right for me. My this father man has who's always- who's grown from his past indiscretions, this man who's made mistakes that you're now not allowing him to grow from again, that man, 
You were barely a child, and Walt made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. And what you did was remove his ability to grow from those mistakes. What I did was bring light to a factual situation. If you've seen the post, it is completely objective. It is just fact. Objective, Your Honor, would you like to look at the I'd post like and see, see how post. objective it really is? Now tell me about who this is and what office he was running for and your relationship with him, please. I'm trying to get... He was running for county commissioner. It wasn't the largest office in the land, but it was his start and I was his campaign leader. I turned down my job as a real estate agent of commercial properties, which supported you, fed you, clothed you, and I took up my best friend's cause. He needed help and I was there to help him. I was his campaign manager and as we were going, we were gaining ground, we were gaining traction, we had a following. And then this comes out. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Is this about her coming out being gay? Or are you really mad because you feel that she derailed your good friend's campaign? with that social media post. I mean, let's be honest about this, because we can't fix it unless we clearly understand it. It can't be fixed. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Jesse Grisham, who is suing her father, Chris Grisham, for $7,200. When you made the decision to do this post, talk to me about your thought process. What, did, what were you thinking? My goal with the post was to bring light to a situation that was happening to my hometown that affects people that I know directly, my friends and the women that I know there, as well as my father, who, when this did eventually come to light, because it would have come to light, would have not only slandered Walt, but my father as well. And the hometown you just couldn't get away from fast enough. Now you're real keen on protecting it. That's convenient. So did you think that maybe this was a conversation you should have with your father before you put this post on social media? Um, at the time, I had not been in contact with my father for several months. Yet you were depending on him to support you in, all, in Los Angeles. Yes. Do you not see some contradiction in that? I understand the argument of I should have reached out more, I should have stayed connected more to you when I moved because you were supporting me and I should have been more grateful for that. However, it is extremely hard to keep in contact with somebody who you know and clearly has expressed that they will not love you anymore because of who I love. Well, no, let's talk about this. I, I have, have not no heard him. I have not heard him say that. Is that how you feel? Has he expressed that to you? Because you have now openly taken the stance that you are gay and that you are in a relationship with a woman. Have you had this kind of conversation with your dad? And has he expressed to you that he doesn't love you anymore? He certainly not said that in this courtroom, but tell me, talk to me. He, the, when I reached out to him again, um, we discussed the post as well as my girlfriend. And before I could level with him, explain to him how I met her, explain to him how much she means to me, he told me that because of that decision, because of the lifestyle that I have chosen, he doesn't know who I am anymore. I am not his daughter anymore, which is why he no longer wants to support me. Not because of the post, because I am not his daughter I anymore. I have not said that to you. I was disappointed. Chris, talk to me. Chris, talk to me. Chris? No truth to it, Your Honor. I mean, My brother's gay. Watching him grow up gay in Texas. You think I would love you? Was it the working 14 hours a day? Was it working every holiday? You worked every holiday. To put food in your stomach. To put you in a bed and in a safe home. And when you wanted to go discover yourself, I did it again. When I changed careers and had less money, I still supported you. And the second you got traction, 
You tore that under me. What is it going to take for this relationship to be fixed? What is it going to take? What is it going to take? All I've ever wanted, Your Honor, was a father who was there for me. So yes, he worked, and he supported me, and he put food on the table, and he made sure that I lived in a nice house in a nice neighborhood. But this man couldn't even tell you my favorite color if you asked for it. He doesn't know who I am. He never knew who I am, and even when I moved out to Los Angeles, he has never once expressed interest on who I am as a person. So for him to say that he was going to go back on an agreement that he proposed to pay my rent and to support me because he wants to dictate who I am now, that it just doesn't make any sense to me. Why, why now? Why after I came out and I, I decided- I never tried to dictate who you are. You're hanging out with a bunch of nonsense and fools. They're playing video games, they're smoking pot all day. You're not doing what you were supposed to do, and that's become stronger. Grow. So that's I all haven't I grown? You. Just, you're better than the group you're with. And I don't mean the homosexual group. What I mean is the weakness of the friends around you are pulling you with them. Chris. You just said to me that your brother is gay. That's what you just said. You just said, my brother's gay. If I love him, surely I can love my daughter. Correct. Is that what you just said? Correct. Right. Is this about her coming out being gay, or are you really mad because you feel that she derailed your good friend's campaign with that social media post? I mean, let's be honest about this, because we can't fix it unless we clearly understand it. It can't be fixed. I've been doing this for a long time. I know what I'm talking about. Derailing his career and mine? How did it didn't derail help. yours? I was his campaign manager. Without for a campaign, what do I manage? Months. You were his campaign manager. Two for months two was months. on the track. Four months was to the polls. Six months was to the office. We were going to get there. You had a career. You left it for a campaign. And you left your home for a hope. And I'm not allowed to do it. Coming up. There's no price, and I hope I can say this without crying. There is no price that I can put on the conversations that I have with my dad. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Jesse Grisham who is suing her father, Chris Grisham, for $7,200. I don't believe your father is disowning you because you're gay. I think he believes that you derailed um, Walt's campaign and you hurt him in the process of it. I think that his reaction of not paying anymore was out of anger. Um, and so I need to understand what each of you is prepared to do right now to try to think about how we move past this, right? Because this is bigger than money. There's no price, and I hope I can say this without crying, there is no price that I can put on the conversations that I have with my dad. I literally used to leave court, Harvey, on days when things were just closing in and really hard, I would call my dad. I said, Dad, I'm coming for lunch. He says, I can throw something together. But it wasn't even about the food. It was just being able to sit at that kitchen table and talk to my dad about anything. And as God would have it, I literally, and I've never said this publicly, I literally spent the last weekend that he was alive, just out of, it was a holiday weekend, my kids and I, we're over there, and I spent the night. And we sat at that kitchen table talking until about 2 o'clock that morning. And little did I know that God would take him quickly, uh, unexpectedly, a couple of days later. Coming up. Even though you haven't necessarily been there for me emotionally as I grew up, especially after Mom died, <laughs> that I do still love her.
You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Jesse Grisham, who is suing her father, Chris Grisham, for $7,200. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna enter judgment, Jesse, against your father right now for the $7,200. I'm not, and let me tell you why. Because it is more important to me that you all take this time to sit down and figure this out. I think you all need to get into counseling. I think there needs to be some real healing. And I think that that is money that your father ought to spend on that counseling. I'd rather the money be spent there. I think you're independent now. I think you're standing on your own two feet. I think you can figure it out. Get some extra part-time jobs to finish weight. You want to be grown, you want to be independent, then let's be grown and be independent, all right? And I expect that you, whatever insurance doesn't cover, I expect you to pay for it. I need you all in counseling, and I need you in counseling now. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, do you really understand what I'm saying? Yes. Right? I do. Right? I think you gotta let go of some of the past, right? That you're feeling abandoned in a way and he wasn't always there and as angry as you are about the situation with Walt, she's your daughter. All right, so I am denying the claim for $7,200. I expect you to pay for this therapy. I expect for you to find jobs to figure out how you're gonna pay your rent. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Now, what do you all got to say to each other? Um, I just want you to know that even though you haven't necessarily been there for me emotionally as I grew up, especially after mom died, that I do still love you. Just what are you thinking? I raise you to fight. First person you fight, your old man. <laughs> I could reach out more. I would have always picked up the phone. But I also could have dialed it. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Good point. All right. There's a lot of work to be done. And I think that the um, use of a professional to help facilitate these conversations is gonna be very important. For the reasons that I have stated, I am denying the claim. We're clear about the plan. And um, I wish you both, honestly, I wish you both the very, very best. We'll stand adjourned. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I'm sorry I was so distant. Me too. I thought Providing for you was love, and I was wrong. We'll get better. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.